my TNA Turning Point 2010 pay-per-view review. The pay-per-view is last night exclusively on pay-per-view. As far as this pay-per-view, it's like a lot of other TNA pay-per-views and even WWE pay-per-views in general, where a lot of the pay-per-views this year from both companies have been pretty much either lackluster, average at best, and a lot of them being throwaway pay-per-views, which was pretty much what this pay-per-view was. It was another one of those in the lines of a throwaway pay-per-view and a very lackluster pay-per-view from TNA, but with the card of this pay-per-view, what would you actually expect? I don't think many people were expecting anything good. I think most people would have been surprised that this was even an average pay-per-view. That's how lackluster the card was for this pay-per-view going into it, but both TNA and WWE need to step up their game and put together more enticing pay-per-views, more cards for their pay-per-views that entice the viewers to go out and actually purchase the pay-per-view, because None of these, a lot of these TNA pay-per-views this year, even a lot of WWE pay-per-views in both companies, TNA, you know, $35 for their pay-per-view, WWE, $45 for their pay-per-view. And d does either company really think that with a lot of their cards they put together in the lineups they put for their pay-per-view that they're actually going to get a lot of people to go out their way and purchase it now? With both companies, WWE can get away with it more having a lot of throwaway pay-per-views because they're a big business and they can get away with having probably eight to ten lackluster pay-per-views and maybe have three or four good pay-per-views every single year. They got a different business model than TNA. TNA cannot quite get away with that. TNA is pretty much just trying to stay alive. That's pretty much what they're just trying to do. And having a lot of these lackluster pay-per-views and a lot of these lineups and these cards for this pay-per-view that just doesn't entice a lot of viewers. I mean, hell, even a, a lot of people probably say with a lot of these TNA pay-per-views, especially the TNA pay-per-view from last night, some people probably would say, I wouldn't even watch that for free, which shows how bad the card for it is. So TNA needs to do a little better with that. And TNA's got the talent. That's the one thing that TNA has over WWE is if they wanted to and they had some stronger booking and more you know, creative booking and some good storylines and stuff like that, they could be a good company because they definitely got the talent, which is one thing that really pisses me off about TNA. And I think that's the one thing why a lot of us are more critical on TNA than to WWE because with WWE, we're really not expecting much. If WWE just gives us a few good things here and there, that's good just to see um, because WWE is really not, you know, trying to target the hardcore fan base. And a lot of us already know that. So we don't expect as much out of WWE that we do out of TNA, and that's the reason why I'm more critical at sometimes when I to TNA because TNA has the talent and they can do some good stuff, but they just don't do it. And this pay per view was just one of those prime examples of it. Um, the first hour of this pay per view was very enjoyable. Then after the tag team match with Team 3D versus the Motion Machine Guns, the pay per view just went completely downhill because I was enjoying the first hour of the pay per view. The Motor City Machine Guns versus Team 3D was easily the match tonight. Great tag team match. You saw a good women's match with Tara and Mickey James. And the uh, exhibition title match with Robbie E versus Jay Lethal, even though I hate the whole the Shore gimmick and the Jersey Shore ripoff stuff they do with Cookie and Robbie E, and I think it's plainly completely pathetic. But even that match was good, and um, Robbie E, a.k.a. Rob Echoes, is a talented performer. So that was a pretty solid match. But after that, the pay-per-view just went completely downhill with a lot of the rest of the matches you know, at best being watchable. A lot of them seeming exactly like stuff you would see on TNA Impact, just TV quality matches. And yet again, another TNA pay-per-view where the main event of the pay-per-view just doesn't deliver. And that's one huge problem with the company is that's the one part where you're supposed to try your best to deliver all the time. Um, that's the one part of your program where you need to deliver all the time, which is the main event. Because if you don't deliver in your main event, a lot of people aren't going to go out their way and order the pay-per-view, even if you have one or two other good matches in the pay-per-view. People are, you know, when they go into ordering a pay-per-view, the main reason why a lot of people order the pay-per-view is a lot of times the main event, and the main event's lackluster, and the main event doesn't seem like it could be great. Fans aren't going to go out their way and purchase it, and Matt Morgan and Jeff Hardy just, I already knew it wasn't going to be a good match, and it wasn't a good match at all. Um, you can definitely tell it was just something they threw together at the last minute. Jeff Hardy was just going going through the motions, they weren't even really trying to do anything in there, and it was just completely terrible, and even the ending of the match, they, Jeff Hardy and Matt Morgan, I guess you could say both of them, I guess the referee as well, completely fucked up the finish, so that kind of hurt the match as well, so that's something you need to do, you need to put on more pay-per-view where their lineup is, more enticing the viewers, and 
catches people's attention like, whoa, this could be a great pay-per-view. And that just wasn't what I got from this card right here. And after seeing the pay-per-view, it wasn't much of a pay-per-view at all. It was very lackluster. Like I said, the first hour was very good. But other than that, the first hour after that, the second, the other two hours were completely flat. Now, the first matchup was Robbie E versus Jay Lethal for the X Division Championship. This was a pretty good match. Good back and forth action. Wasn't a great X Division match. Um... You know, the whole the Shore gimmick and the Jersey Shore thing, I completely despise it. And TNA, obviously, with this, the reason why they gave Robbie E the title, he won this match after hitting the neckbreaker on Jay Lethal. The reason why they gave him the title is because he's not getting over at all. The whole Jersey Shore thing that TNA is trying to do here, the Shore is not getting over the crowd. It just cannot stand it. They're pretty much getting X-Pac type heat. They're getting the type of heat where it's not because they are doing a good job of playing a heel they're, get, they're getting the heel heat. The crowd just doesn't give a damn about them. And pretty much the feeling where every time they see them, they don't care about them. And pretty much the feeling like, well, if I was at home, I'd be switching the channel. That's what the crowd pretty much gives them. So they're not getting good heel heat here. So they gave him the title to try to get some, you know, something behind Robbie. Try to, you know, build him up a little bit. And that's the reason why they did it because he isn't getting over. So that's the reason why they gave him the title. Jay Lethal's very over at the crowd, so he doesn't necessarily need the title. And obviously with this, with Robbie getting the title, expect TNA to waste another $15,000 getting the idiot from Jersey Shore, the stupid stupid, idiotic reality show, Jay Wow to come back and waste another $15,000 because they're probably going to do that at another point since he's the exhibition champion right now. Expect TNA to do that pretty soon. I would expect them to try to get her back in yet again and do the thing with uh, Cookie, a.k.a. Becky Bayless. Um, wasn't a bad match, just the whole the Shore gimmick just kind of really hurts uh, Rob Echoes, a.k.a. Robbie E. He's actually a pretty good performer. I just The gimmick is really the thing that takes away from him, I would say. Um, like I said, two and a half stars. Pretty solid exhibition match. The next matchup was Tara versus Mickey James. Now, the only problem I have with this match is that the knockouts title, the women's title on TNA, pretty much has taken the backseat for this feud. That's the only problem here. I kind of wish that if they did this Terror and Mickey James feud, that it would be over the, not only they could incorporate their pass with each other, it would be best to, you know, have it for the title as well, because I think these two right here, Terror and Mickey James, could breathe new life into the knockouts division, actually make that division seem like something like it was great back when they had uh, Kong and Gal Kim and their feud. I think these two could breathe new life into it, and I think it would be smart if the knockout title was on the line. But nonetheless, even without that and the little problem I have there, this was a very good women's match. Uh, good back and forth action. They were pretty much brawling the whole entire time. The match ends in a no contest. They were brawling all over the arena. Now, the end of the match, it looks like it would have been the way the ref signaled the match to end. It looks like Terra would have, you know, been the one to win the match via disqualification because the referee signaled it after getting thrown into a, one of the uh, barricades or the walls outside in the crowd after Mickey James threw him into that, but it was ruled a no contest. Um, so you're going to see these two continue it, and then even after the bell kept on ringing, they kept on brawling over the arena. This really was very good. I really can't wait to see where this is going to lead to next. Can't wait to see their next match now. Their next match will probably be some type of street fight with the way this ended or no disqualification or something, which could be something great. These two did some good stuff here, and it was one of those times with uh, TNA and a women's women's match in mainstream wrestling. I could actually say this was better than the typical Divas match. This was actually a pretty enjoyable women's match, and even with the no contests, finish of the match it was fairly enjoyable i would say about two and a half stars two and three four stars very enjoyable women's match then the next match up was for the tna world tag team championships this was the modus machine guns defending the titles against team 3d this was team 3d's final match in tna this this is their retirement match or they're claiming to be retirement match because we all know how wrestling goes when wrestlers say they retire they really never completely mean it so we'll have to see if this is actually Team 3D's last match in wrestling. So right now, it is Team 3D's last match in wrestling unless they completely change their idea of it. And I think this is a good way for them to end their career. I think Team 3D, they probably should have retired a little while ago. Now, this was a good match here, good back and forth action. These two teams have had good chemistry in the past. So I was expecting something good, and this was actually even better than I was expecting. Um, great back and forth action, just a great tag match. Um, they did a good job making it look like it could go either way. Now, the one thing I was kind of worried about that 
TNA would have done here is have the Guns lose the title to Team 3D and then have them retire with the tag team titles. I was expecting TNA to possibly do that, but glad to see they didn't do that. The match ends when um, Shelly and Saban, they hit the skull and bones onto Brother Ray for the victory and to retain the TNA Tag Team Championships. Very good tag match. It was put together very well and very enjoyable. And good to see Team 3D. They put over the guns very well in this match. And good move for TNA to keep the titles on the most machine guns. Glad they did that. And the guns have had a pretty good run with the tag team titles. They had the uh, great Best Out of Five series with the Beer Money Incorporated. They had two good matches with Generation Me. And this match was very good. I would say this was a three and three, four star match. Easily the best match of the night on this pay-per-view. Now, like I said earlier, after this match, the pay-per-view went completely downhill. The next matchup was Tommy Dreamer versus RBD. Now, 12, 13 years ago, I'd be interested in seeing Tommy Dreamer versus RBD. They had a great match in 1997 in ECW. I think November to remember 1997 in ECW. And that was a great match 13 years ago. Uh, now, 13 years later, these two really didn't have a good match at all. Now, there was one thing in this match you possibly could say kind of hurt the quality of the match, which... Really couldn't, neither one could help. It was Tommy Dreamer, apparently at some point in this match, he looked like he broke his wrist. Now, he's claiming on his Twitter he didn't break his wrist, where he's just saying he has to go see a doctor. Now, it looked like he broke his wrist in this match because his bone was pretty much almost popping out of his skin in this match. So, he injured himself there, and he was pretty much selling that through most of the match. And that pretty much hurt a lot of the match, I would say, right there. And even even before that, this match wasn't going on pretty wasn't going on good either in in it wasn't going on good anyway, and they kind of dragged it on. It seems like the match could have ended about four or five minutes earlier. They dragged it on and kept on saying, when is this match going to end? And that was kind of one thing that hurt the match right there. If they didn't drag it out so much, it might have turned off and came off and came off a little better than what it did. I would say about one and three, four stars. RBD picks up the victory in the match. Then the next matchup was uh, Fortune versus EV2. And the rules originally for this match was going to be whichever side wins the match, they get to fire someone on the opposing side. Now, that got changed to if anyone on EV2 gets pinned in this match, they are done with TNA and they get fired. So, obviously, it was very predictable the route this was going to go. Now, this wasn't a bad match with EV2 and uh, Fortune, a uh, 10-man tag right here. It wasn't bad at all. Just the problem with it, it felt like a TV match. Uh, I don't know if uh, early in the match, I don't know if uh, Brian Kendrick, I don't know if he got hurt or in storyline-wise, he was just taking himself out of the match so he wouldn't have to suffer taking the pinfall where in his eyes, if he takes himself out of the match and gets out of the match, fakes an injury, he won't have to be out there just in case he gets pinned. So don't know if he was actually hurt or selling something or that's a part of some storyline they're going to do right there. And um, Sabu's the one to take the pinfall in this match after AJ Styles hits the uh, Styles Clash in this match. Uh, but like I said, it wasn't a bad match. It just felt like an uh, 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 impact match. felt like a TV match. It definitely wasn't pay-per-view quality. Uh, two stars, maybe two and one, four stars at best. It was at least watchable. And it, for what it was, it was okay, I would say. Um, after the uh, third match on this pair, this probably was the best match after the Team 3D and... Um, most Machine Guns match, which is really saying how far the rest of the pay-per-view went downhill. Then the next matchup was Abyss versus the Pope D'Angelo Nero in a Lumberjacks match. Now, this match, um, you could pretty much tell the writing was on the wall what was going to happen here. It was very predictable because going into this, everything was backed up against the wall against Abyss, and the deck was stacked against him. The Pope, this was a Lumberjack match, and his congregation were the Lumberjacks. So you knew at some time the Lumberjacks were going to turn on the Pope, which they did at one point. Uh, Eric Bischoff, he came out on the stage. Pope was looking at him. He was signaling, you know, uh, money. And the Pope was wondering, what the hell is he talking about? Then he turns around. Uh, one of the congregation, I don't know if it was actually the Pope's brother, but they were playing it as his brother, which was Kevin. He attacked the Pope from behind the congregation, beat up the Pope. Then got him in the ring. Abyss hit the black hole slam, so Abyss wins the match. So it was very predictable right there where it was going to go because you're like, okay, the previous match, Bischoff and Hogan and the Immortals pretty much booked, uh, stacked the deck up against EV2 where Fortune didn't have anything to lose if they lost the match and EV2 was the only one to lose. So you're like, okay, what's going to happen here? Pope's looking like he has the upper hand here. So you knew the congregation of his was going to turn on him. And it was a decent match. I would say some of the stuff the Pope and uh, Biss did in the match was good. 
but it's very predictable the route it was going to go in this match. I would say one and one and three four stars at best. Just a watchable match. Then the next matchup was uh, Jeff Jarrett versus Samoa Joe. Now we seen these two take on each other before, and this was just then another match where Jeff Jarrett completely booked himself in a way to make himself look good and. You, in some ways, I guess you could say they didn't bury Samoa Joe because they kind of made Joe look strong where Jarrett needed all this help to beat him because they had Murphy and Gunner, the hired henchmen of Bischoff and Hogan, to come out there. They attacked Samoa Joe. Joe was beating them down. Then Jarrett got the knife stick, hit Joe with that, choked him out, put him in the Kikita clutch, and Jarrett won the match that way when the ref got back in the ring. So in some ways, I guess you could say, well, Jarrett needed all that help, and he needed the he needed, you know, all that help to pick up the victory against Joe. So some people probably would make that excuse, saying they didn't bury Joe. But I think it came off that they buried Joe, and they've been pretty much wasting Joe this whole entire year. And this is easily the worst match of the night, I would say. One and a half stars, just wasn't enjoyable at all. Then the main event was uh, Matt Morgan versus Jeff Hardy for the TNA World Tag World Heavyweight Championship. And this match, like I said, this got added at the last minute where. It originally, it was going to be Mr. Anderson versus Jeff Hardy, but due to Anderson being out with a concussion, they changed it to Matt Morgan versus Jeff Hardy, and that got announced on reaction. So it didn't even get announced on their TV show, which is kind of bad. It got, got announced on their reaction show after Impact, which pretty much only half the audience that watch Impact even tune in for that show, which actually, uh, compared to uh, Impact reactions, is actually pretty enjoyable and actually a pretty fun show most of the time, I would say, compared to Impact, um, cause you see a lot of stuff what happens on Impact, and I think it's a better show than Impact for the most part, at least most of the time it is, and this match, you, you could tell they that they just pretty much went out there, didn't even try either one of them, Jeff Hardy didn't really try, Matt Morgan didn't really even try, and the, any of the match, they completely fucked up right here, where Matt Morgan, he went for the carbon footprint, hit it on Jeff Hardy, went for the pen, and Jeff Hardy, I guess, forgot to count out, then Matt Morgan just lifted his leg up and pretty much kicked the ref and was like, okay, he didn't lift his shoulder up, so why didn't I get the three, and then that kind of looked bad right there, then he ended up hitting the twist of fate, Morgan kicks out, then he hits the twist of fate, I think, for the third time in the match, and that's what takes out Matt Morgan, and Jeff Hardy retains the championship. Very weak main event, I would say, one and three, four stars, but a main event of Matt Morgan and Jeff Hardy, I wasn't really expecting much because I knew neither one was probably going to really try too much since it was a match that just got add, added at the last minute pretty much and just thrown together main event for TNA. And not, not only that, obviously, with Jeff Hardy being with Immortals, they're obviously going to have him. They, that was the one interesting thing was in this match. Other than the big man working on, you know, Jeff Hardy's leg, which you would expect, Jeff Hardy was doing that on Matt Morgan. So I thought that was kind of interesting. They switched the roles right there, and just wasn't that much of an entertaining main event right here. One and three, four stars. That might even be generous. Just couldn't really get into it. And Matt Morgan really showed himself that he definitely doesn't deserve being in the main event. And I would say about a year year ago, Matt Morgan was very over with the crowd, and you probably could put him in the main event. But now it's like. They don't fans don't really care about him anymore. And Jeff Hardy, he's he, he's kind of working as a heel and kind of not. It's kind of the way depends on the way you look at it right there. Then all fortune and all fortune and the immortals come out there celebrate. Uh, the confetti goes down and Jeff Hardy celebrating. That's the way the pay per view goes off the air. Pay per view, I'll probably give it maybe a five out of ten, maybe a five point five out of ten. It just wasn't a good pay per view from TNA. Um, the first hour of the pay-per-view was entertaining, and the best match, obviously, was the Moose Machine Guns versus uh, Team 3D. The women's match was enjoyable, and the exhibition title match was solid for what it was. But the after that, the pay-per-view went completely downhill and just wasn't a good pay-per-view from TNA. And TNA and WWE, both companies, just need to step up their game and put on some better pay-per-views than what they have been putting on recently. It's not just TNA, it's WWE as well. Both of them are not putting on the best pay reviews I think they could put on, especially TNA with their talent. I know TNA could do better. WWE, I think they're not really even trying, so I think neither one's really trying. They just need, both need to step up their game. Just, just wasn't a good pay review from TNA, I would say. Uh, skip this pay review. Nothing really much to see. If you check out anything, just watch the first hour of the pay review. After that, cut it off. Don't watch anything else because if the pay review stayed on track and it was being the way the first hour was, 
It probably would have been a good pay review from TNA, but after the first hour, it just went downhill. So yeah, that's it for my TNA Turning Point 2010 pay-per-view review. I right, peace.